What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna find out what the static keyword is in Apex. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. In this episode, we are gonna go over what the static keyword means in Apex. We're gonna figure out what it is, why it's important, do an example together in Apex, and we're gonna figure out the difference between the static keyword in Apex as opposed to other languages like Java or C Sharp because <clears throat> it is quite a bit different in some respects. And um, for those of you transitioning from another language to Apex, I don't want you to be as confused as I was for quite a while. But before we get into all that, make sure if you actually enjoy this video to like it. Because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that want to learn about this stuff for free. So you enjoy the video, like it. Now, let's get back to figuring out more about that static keyword. I am first going to try to explain what static is um, in the simplest way I can think to explain it. <clears throat> But I will be upfront with you and state that you're probably going to need to wait through the end of the example to really grasp the difference between something that is static, declared as static with a static keyword, and something that isn't. Um, yeah, so if you're still confused by the end of this explanation, just stick through to the end of the example, and I promise by the end of it, it'll make a whole lot of sense. <clears throat> So, the difference uh, between a static and a non-static variable, or I should say, when you declare something with the static keyword, it changes so that it essentially becomes a member of this class um, that you've created. It now can only have one instance of itself or one version of itself that's shared among all instances of this class, <laughs> which is definitely confusing if you're brand new to software development or code in general. But a few episodes back, we figured out how to instantiate a class together, right? We figured out that <clears throat> to instantiate a class, you give your variable the type or the name of your class. You then name your variable. So we'll say class variable or something. It can be any name. And then you set it equal to a new version of your class, like so. And we also saw that you could access methods um, and variables through that instantiation of that class. So we can call that non-static method in here. And what we didn't talk about is you can instantiate this class as many times as you wanted to. You'd have to change the name of the variable, of course, but you could change it or create as many of these as you wanted, right? You could essentially create 3,000 variables that were a new instance of this class. Now, you probably shouldn't do that, but you could. Um, and Every single time you created a new instance of this class, anything that is not static is unique to this variable that you've created. So this class variable calling this non-static method, it's unique to this version of the class or this non-static string, for instance, is unique to this version of the class, whereas the static variables are not unique to each instantiated version of the class. They are instead shared between all instantiated versions of a class. And that's super important. It is also occasionally super useful. So the main difference is when you use the static keyword this variable or this method is now shared between all versions, all initialized or instantiated versions of this class. Not just one, but all of them. And uh, we'll see 
what a difference that makes when we do this example here that we're about to get into <laughs> right now. So if you're still a little confused, let's do this example. And I promise by the end of it, you will be less so. <clears throat> All right. So first thing we're going to do is down here in this non-static method, we are going to um, pass in a value. Uh, we'll call it a string value. And we'll say static string update, like so. And we'll say static string equals static string update. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. <clears throat> and we're going to see how that uh, impacts things, right? So in this first instantiation of my class that I have, uh, and I'm using the Apex Anonymous window over here, so I'm just uh, executing some Apex Anonymous code, we're going to see <clears throat> how this changes things, right? Um, we will also say public void print static string value. And we'll just say system debug. <clears throat> this is the static string, like so. Actually, a better way to view this is showing the static string and the non-static string at the same time. So let's do that together. We'll just say print string values, where we'll print both the static and the non-static string together. Um, so we'll say, this is the static string, and we'll print out static string, and then we'll also have another one <clears throat> where we say, this is the non-static string, like so. And I will also update this on static string equals static string update, like so. I'm going to actually refactor this and just name the whole thing string update. So now the static string and the non-static string are going to get updated by this method. And we're going to see between these um, classes what the difference is. So we'll say non-static method, <clears throat> and we'll pass it the name of the string to update, and we'll say awesome string, bruh, whoa, accidentally hit a couple keys at the same time there. And then on these other two instantiations of the class, we are just going to say class variable two dot print string values and class variable three dot print string values like so right so again with this first instantiation of our <clears throat> class we are going to update both the static string and the non-static string to awesome string bro and then we're going to print the values of our static and non-static strings for each initialization of this class. And uh, we're going to save this. And then we are going to run it and see what we get in the debug logs over here, pending and mess anything silly up. So you can see that the first time that we print out our static strings, we have awesome string bra for the static string, and we also have it for the non-static one. But for the others, we only have the static string stuck as awesome string bra, and the other one is left alone. It's still instance stuff, right? So I've initialized this non-static string up here to say instance stuff. But I've initialized this one, the static one, to say static stuff. However, you can see it did not revert in these new instances of the class that static string back to static stuff, right? 
it kept the awesome string bra that we set it to with the first initialization of this class. And so you can kind of see that unlike the non-static or the instance variable that was able to revert back to its initial value of instance stuff, the static one, again, was shared uh, between all versions of the class. You can see that um, even though you know class variable two is a new instance of this static keyword example class, and so is uh, static or sorry class variable three, they are all printing that same awesome string, bruh, <laughs> which gets more and more ridiculous every time I say it. Um, so that static variable is shared between all instances of a class, right? It does not change, um, you know, it, it's if you change it with the first um, instance of your class, <clears throat> it will stay that way for the second and the third. Alternatively, if you changed it with the second instance, it would stay that way for the third, right? Um, so pretty cool thing to have and to be able to leverage. It's especially uh, useful in <clears throat> a handful of scenarios. Like uh, one of the, the more common scenarios you will see this with is uh, turning triggers on and off uh, within an execution context. Um, so useful uh, keyword and, and useful you know, thing to know about. It does come in handy quite a bit. Now the difference between a static method and a non-static method like we have here is that if I tried to call, <clears throat> again, it is the static method is shared by all members of this class uh, or all instantiations of this class rather. However, if I tried to say class variable dot static method, You'll notice that it's not auto-completing for me. And also, if I tried to do it, it'll throw this variable, or sorry, this error that says static method cannot be referenced from a non-static context. And that's because you can't call a static method from an instantiation of your class, right? This static method is a member of this class. And instead of being called through a new instantiation of this class. Instead, you call it by saying static keyword example dot static method, like so. Essentially, doing the same thing as we've seen before, this method is not <clears throat> unique to an instantiation of a class. So instead, it is at, you know, there's only ever one instance of this method or one place in which you can call this method. Um, and you do so by calling the name of the class and then the name of the method like so. So <clears throat> if you ever want to access static members of a class, whether it's a string or sorry, wh whether it's a variable or whether it's a method, you cannot do so through a variable that you initialize uh, using that you know, variable instantiation that we've seen in the past. Instead, you have to just use the name of the class dot the method or the variable that you're trying to access within that class. So again, if we wanted to get our static string, we would do so like this. If we tried to use our instantiation of the class, class variable, and we said class variable dot static string, we'd get the same error as we got before, which I, again, realize is uh, very difficult to read, but it says static field cannot be referenced from a non-static context, which makes sense because, again, these are not things that you can instantiate. They are not things that are unique um, to the class variable or this new version of the class that you have. 
they are shared between all instances of the class and they are a member of the class itself <clears throat> and so they need to be treated as such right and yeah so hopefully that kind of makes sense especially through the debug logs that we have here <clears throat> as you can see um, static things, variables or methods, are treated very differently. Um, just to recap one last time, if you have a static anything, it is shared between all instances of a class. Even if there are 10,000 instances, they would all be shared between them. Whereas if you have a non-static method, or a non-static variable, they are not shared between all instances of your class. Instead, they're unique to each instance, and they can change unique to each instance. So anyway, um, <clears throat> hopefully that clears it up. As far as the last uh, thing that I wanted to talk about the difference between the static keyword in C sharp or Java as opposed to Salesforce um, if I was in Java or C sharp and I changed this static variable to you know awesome string bra like I did before then it would keep this value awesome string bra through each transaction right every single transaction. But what you'll notice is if I drop this call like I had before, you know, so before I was uh, setting this to awesome string, bruh, those static and non-static variables <clears throat> here. What you'll notice is if I drop this and I run this again, just like before, it does not keep that awesome string, bruh. So we'll run it, and instead it'll be static stuff, instant stuff, static stuff, instant stuff, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, right? So it does not keep that static variable through multiple transactions. It only keeps this static variable through a single execution of your Apex code. Um, so it's extremely important to recognize that this static variable, as soon as your execution context for Apex, which we will go into much more depth eventually in this tutorial series, what an execution context is. <clears throat> as soon as your single execution context is over, this static variable resets itself to whatever it was prior to that execution context, right? Um, wh whatever its starting value is supposed to be. If it's null, it's null. If it's an empty string, it's an empty, empty string. If it's initialized to static stuff like we have here, it's static stuff. But this is super critical to understand because uh, I thought it would retain itself like it does in many other languages, but it does not. So. As soon as an execution context ends, your static variable resets itself and you start over from where you were before. <clears throat> you cannot share uh, you know, static variable updates between execution A and execution B in Salesforce. They are different, unfortunately. And that goes for asynchronous things uh, as well. <clears throat> okay, so I think we've probably gone over enough for the static uh, keyword. Hopefully you understand it. But if you don't, definitely leave me uh, a comment. Ask me about it. I'm happy to uh, break it down for you more because I know this is a little bit confusing uh, the first couple times that you use it. So anyway, guys, um, thanks so much for watching, and I will hopefully see you in the next episode.